Hello friends, Dr. Kofi here again and welcome to my YouTube channel. It is Tutor Med where everything medicine is simplified. In today's video, we will have our third surgery tutorials and as usual, we will answer and discuss one clinical case. And so if you are preparing for your licensure exam, kindly subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified when new videos are uploaded. Alright friends, let's get straight to today's clinical case. A 35 year old man came with severe pain in the buttocks with fever, rigors of 3 days duration. On examination, he has vague tenderness in the right side of the anus and digital rectal examination, though uncomfortable, was not particularly tender. The first question says, what is the clinical diagnosis? And so let's take a few seconds to think through this case. And so for this case, the relevant information are the patient's age and sex. He's a 35 year old man. His presenting complaint, which is severe pain in the buttocks and which is associated with fever and rigors of three days duration. Then another relevant point is that he has vague tenderness, although he came with severe pain. He has vague tenderness in the right side of the anus and a DRE, although uncomfortable, was not particularly tender, although he came complaining of severe pain. And so here, the clinical diagnosis is a right ischio-rectal abscess or a right ischio-anal abscess. Let's see in our subsequent slides how we arrived at this diagnosis. Now this is a case of an anorectal abscess and there are various types of abscesses which can develop in the anorectum. To understand anorectal abscesses, let's take a brief look at the anorectal region. This is a longitudinal section which shows the distal or the last portion of the rectum and the entire anal canal. Now just like the diaphragm in the chest, which divides the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity, there are a group of muscles called the pelvic diaphragm. These muscles form a hole through which the pelvic organs pass, including the GIT organs, particularly the rectum and the anus. Now in relation to the rectum and the anus, this pelvic diaphragm is the dividing line between the rectum and the anus. So the level of the pelvic diaphragm is a separating point for the rectum and the anus. Now approximately, the anal canal is about 4 cm in length. Surrounding the anal canal are muscle sphincters known as anal sphincters. And we have the internal anal sphincter which is close to the anal lumen. In fact, this internal anal sphincter is the continuation of the circular muscles of the rectum. And then we have the external anal sphincter labeled. Now you can see that within the mucosa of the anus, we have these longitudinal folds in the upper part. And these longitudinal folds are called anal columns. At the base of the inner columns are short transverse folds, which form the base of these columns. And these short transverse folds are called inner valves. And the line formed when the inner valves are followed continuously is called the pectinate or the dentate line. Now, at the level of the inner valve, there are depressions. And these depressions are called inner sinuses. 
why do we have to go through this because these depressions contain the anal crypts and these anal crypts lead to the anal glands the anal glands are located in between the internal sphincter and the external sphincter here the region between the internal sphincter and external sphincter is called the intersphincteric region and an abscess begins with an infection in the anal crypt which spreads into the anal glands and with time the infection forms an abscess and so you appreciate that most anorectal abscesses begin as intersphincteric abscesses because that is where the anal glands are and so basically we want to show the anal crypts which leads to the anal glands and that most infections begin in the anal crypts and then they spread to the anal glands where they eventually become an abscess or they eventually separate that is the point we want to make here very good having understood or having had a basic understanding of the anal canal Let's look at the various types or classifications of anorectal abscesses. Let's do that using another diagram. This diagram gives a broader view than the first we used in the previous slide. Again, this is the dividing line between the rectum and the anus. How could I tell that on this diagram, this is the dividing line because of the muscle here? which I would label P. That is the pelvic diaphragm in the longitudinal section. And where it ends is the dividing point between the rectum and the anus. Now this is the internal anal sphincter and this is the external anal sphincter. Remember we said that the anal glands where abscesses usually begin are located within the intersphincteric region and so an abscess formed here is the intersphincteric abscess that is the first classification we have then this abscess can spread in various directions it may spread downwards to this region and would form the perianal abscess as indicated by this red circle Apart from spreading downwards, it may spread laterally into the region between the anus and the ischium of the pelvis or the pelvic bones. The region between the anus and the ischium is known as the ischioanal abscess, correctly, but sometimes it's referred to as the ischiorectal abscess. And so the abscess here will be called an ischioanal, sorry or an ischiorectal abscess. Then the intersphincteric abscess can also spread upwards to go above the pelvic diaphragm. Now another name for the pelvic diaphragm is actually the levator ini muscle. And since the abscess is above the levator ini, that abscess is called the supralevator abscess. Sometimes the abscess would not spread laterally downwards or upwards but would spread circumferentially at the same level and it will form a horseshoe abscess. And so let me indicate or let me highlight the abscesses already indicated in this diagram. We have the intersphincteric abscess, the perianal abscess, when spread laterally, we have the ischioanal abscess and the supralevator abscess. There are other abscess classifications listed in Baja, including submucous abscess and then intermuscular abscess. However, these are the four basic ones we want to focus on. And so please do not forget to like and share this video and subscribe to our channel if you have not done that yet. Now of all the abscess types or classifications, perianal and ischiorectal or ischioanal abscesses are the most common anorectal abscesses. 
but first is peri inau and then followed by isq inau or isq rectal this documentation is in baja like i mentioned the most common mode is infection in the crypt which will involve the inner gland and ultimately resulting in abscess formation i must point out that it is important to rule out immunosuppressive states like hiv and aids and then poorly controlled diabetes in patients who present with inorectal abscesses and so perianal abscesses come with a painful and a visible swelling at the inner region there might be induration and an obvious redness indicating acute inflammation now i must say that an the inorectal abscesses we have the acute stage and the chronic stage so the acute stage is characterized by the abscess when it becomes chronic it forms a fistula and so i just wanted to pass that information on and then apart from seeing the redness and then a visible swelling the mass is particularly tender on palpation and so this is a picture of a perianal abscess I got from uptodate.com. And so here you see the abscess as labeled and you can see the redness surrounding the mass. And I bet this patient may give you a hard knock if you don't palpate this mass gently because the mass is particularly tender, very, very tender. Again, I want to mention that perianal abscesses are not usually associated with fever, except in locations where the patient is sept septic. Sorry, I wanted to say. And so now let's contrast that with the second most common inorectal abscess, which is the ischioanal or the ischiorectal abscess. These kind of abscesses may not show externally because, as you know, where it is located is relatively deeper than the perianal abscess. Deeper abscesses usually have constitutional symptoms, which may be severe. Sometimes they may have a temperature of more than 40 degrees and patients may have minimal discomfort on the guitar rectal examination. And this fits our clinical case more than perianal. And since he felt it in the right, that's how come we diagnosed the right ischial anal abscess in the patient. Now, Badger documents another possible type of anorectal abscess called submucous abscess. And with that, the intersenteric abscess or the primary location of the abscess spreads medially to involve the submucosa of the inner region and so form the submucous abscess. These patients will not even agree for a DRE to be done because it is extremely painful when the examining finger touches the inner mucosa. And so they may have to be examined under anesthesia. I just wanted to mention this information which is in Baja so that you will be aware or you become aware. Now the second question which was asked by the examiners for this clinical case was named for diagnostic features and this is an acute inflammation with separation or i should say a separative inflammation and so you would have the features of acute inflammation like there'll be tenderness on the digital rectal exam then because you have an abscess you would have some fluctuancy so you'll be palpating a fluctuant mass then you can have differential warmth when you compare the right side to the left side you feel that the right side is warmer than the left then you may have intuitions as well there may be redness but unfortunately i don't think you may be able to see the redness since you are doing a dre and so i didn't add it to the form so these are the answers i found for this now the third question to this clinical case read list four complications that may supervene the first complication is that the patient may have sepsis remember sepsis 
it's a dysregulated host immune response to an infection and every infection is capable of leading to sepsis and so once there's an abscess you can have a dysregulated host immune response which might lead to sepsis then the sepsis may progress to septic shock so septic shock is also under complication and then remember that we said in erectile abscesses the abscess is the acute phase and when it is persistent or when it becomes chronic the, there may be a fistula formation which may drain and so we may have an ischioanal fistula or an ischiorectal fistula then the, the fourth complication is that there may be recurrence even after treatment so even after incision and drainage the patient may may have recurrence then we are asked for four so we, we stick to four but i want to mention that since the abscess is closer to the ischium of the pelvis it may spread to the bone and then cause ischial osteomyelitis and so that is also under complication although not very common but it is possible all right and so the fourth question under this clinical case read discuss your management for this patient and so this patient has constitutional symptoms he has chills rigors fever so what we do is we admit the patient and then we do a full blood count for him we do a blood culture and sensitivity full blood count looking for neutrophilia blood culture and sensitivity to culture any organisms so that it can direct our choice of antibiotics but we can start broad spectrum antibiotics for empirical therapy and then we give IV analgesia and antipyretics for his pain and then for his fever after doing that we promptly refer or we promptly consult surgery for incision and drainage surgery may or surgery would inspect the inner canal for any fistula and then decide whether to do incision and drainage with fistulotomy or just incision and drainage and so the basic thing for the primary physician is to admit the patient do your labs give broad spectrum antibiotics and then give analgesia and antipyretics for their symptoms and then promptly inform surgery then let's look at the last question which was asked here they said give four differential diagnoses and so this can be an anal fissure can also present with pain just like that it can be a gluteal abscess can also present with pain and then fever it can be a pharyngosis can also present with pain and fever and then it can be a prolapsed internal hemorrhoid it can be a pyelonidal disease and so any of these four or yes any of these four when written is a correct answer so thank you for watching this episode kindly do not forget to like and share this video and share this video particularly to anybody writing a licensure exam for the mdc you think this might be beneficial to see you in our next video bye